hope it's in query. Blimey, can't wait to study all that. Very interesting. Still, obviously, only a little bit of the picture, but I did say Boris was a twat, didn't I? It was the basis of the start of all the comedy. To, to get through to people that he's a joke. He's not a politician. When questioned, he didn't even understand the figures. He couldn't explain them. Why did you give out these figures, Mr Prime Minister? Uh, didn't have an answer. Couldn't understand basic maths. It was a joke 20 years ago. BNP, lover boy, we called him. He was a joke in politics. Absolute twat, anti burka telling us to wear masks. The anti, anti burka campaigner. They let him in for a little bit just to get him out of Brexit because he's the only twat that would do it without thought, because he just wanted to show off. Like, I did it, boys. I did it. I did it. I'm going to get in there. I'm going to get us out of Europe. Yeah. I really care about the UK. I really care about people, you know, especially, apart from the old, obviously. They just have to roll over and die, you know. I mean, I just don't understand why everyone won't just let the old people die. Well, you did, mate. You did, because my dad died doing that. Terrified in hospital, alone, because he wasn't allowed to have anyone with him. He didn't even know his name anymore. He didn't even know who he was or where he was. And he's in another planet. How terrified would he have been? I couldn't even reassure him that he's okay and, and why he's going in and everything. He was just left in there, strapped to a bed, so that he didn't wander died two weeks later, but it was so horrific because he shouldn't, he shouldn't have been alone. He should have been with someone that could explain, even to sit in the ambulance, you know. Ooh, he lost half his body weight in the first lockdown. No one could check on him. My mum's losing the plot. She's not coping with him. And he's stuck in the house. I said, look, Dad's getting nagged to death. We can't leave him in there. Oh, no, no, it's a virus. You can't come in. The government have said that we are the most at risk and we must stay in and have no one checking on us. They had, like, their food delivered by some scheme in the neighbourhood. So I took over extra treats, like ice cream and things. Like that. She wouldn't open the front door. She was too frightened. So I had to leave her on the doorstep, go miles away from the house to walk down to the car and she'd run out and grab it. And my dad would go, cup of tea, Alison. And mum would go, no, Terry, it's a virus. We're not allowed to let anyone in and we're not allowed out. Now, I watched Frontline Doctors at the time and no one was allowed to... They, what did the press do to silence the information? These doctors lost their jobs. Frontline doctors treating COVID had... We know the answer. We had it for SARS. The last thing they said is to listen to the advice. You need old people you need checking on because they're vulnerable. They don't want to leave them alone in, in their own houses with no one coming and checking on them. Secondly, they need sunlight, exercise and vitamin D. Do not make them stay in with no sunlight, no exercise, no no anything, no advice to take vitamin D, nothing. Nothing. Yes, give them to us, we look after them in hospital. Yes, yeah, of course you will, yeah. Yeah, when they die, yeah. You know, you just leave them to us. No, you can't come in, no, no relatives. No reassurance, no familiarity for dementia. Unbelievable. I mean, that's obviously just one little subject, but my family wouldn't even listen to me. He had one vaccine two weeks before, the second vaccine two weeks before he's got days to live. Why are we giving him a vaccine? He has dementia. He's not consenting. Who, why, why would you? And he had heart pains. He had to call the ambulance and everything that this, 
both vaccines, but it was like, why did we give it to them? Not that I had any say in the matter. Because obviously they're too frightened to let family reach out to them. And um, for the first time in my life, my mum wants to take exact... She's taking what they recommend without even reading up on them. She's always read up on everything. She wouldn't take it. Normally she'd be like, nope, not having it. This time, shut up, Alison, don't start. Don't get us started on it. I said, well, just read up, Mum, yeah, because there's been, like, deaths. She went, so? Don't start. And they wouldn't even let me in their house. There's my parents. I'm like, hello, I'm your daughter. Remember me? I, where, who do I have? I'm alone. Months in a house alone. My mum and dad don't even let me in. That's never happened. Never. So I said, it's all right for you. It's two of you in there. I'm on my own. Where do I go? Like, you know, my son's autistic. He just stuck to the rules. I can't come home, mum. It's a lockdown, mum, and I'm not coming home until it's over. And that's just two examples, but... Another one is the Queen sitting there all alone. Oh, my God. Are we just going to blank this out like it never happened and everyone's going to... Or is the world going to... Well, the country suddenly, like, average people wake up and go, Oh, my God, this government. What are they doing in? Why have we not had a revolution? Out, out, out. What do we want? Toys out. I'll tell you what, if they vote them in, I'm losing faith in the next generation because they, they can't live through this since 2011 and Victoria I think they all need locking up I just don't think they should it's an illegal vote when you never educate them on politics at school funny that no politics on the curriculum oh no we can't have that we can't have that. What revolutionary? What free thinkers? Oh my God, no. No, we need them stupid. Yeah, we want three newspapers that we control, yeah? And then we tell you the story and then you get angry about certain subjects depending on the politics. It's all designed to get the emotion in so they can pass the laws they get away with in behind the scenes that no one understands it, no one reads any of the government papers. No one studies them. No one discusses the politics. Oh, don't talk about that. What? Just the people that run the world that you're relying on then? Just politics, yeah, nothing. Just everything. It's your whole life. like. And they don't educate anyone. They don't even know it affects them. Anyway, don't get me started. He's a twat. I said he was a twat. I didn't want to be right. But all the comedy that I was making at the time, I couldn't say, literally. The amount of people that said, bloody hell, I thought you were a bit far-fetched there. Comedy about Boris, yeah, bang on, actually. Unfortunately, unfortunately, this is one of those things you don't want to be right, but for fuck's sake, what? You can't even tell them because they know everything, the youngsters anyway. Then you've got to watch it all fuck up again, you've got to go around again. I told my daughter, I said, you wait till your kids grow up. They'd be like, Mum, you just got it into the toys, Mum. You know, you just prejudice. And you'll be like, oh, my God. Really? No, 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 they're really bad. Mind you, they, they've excelled in that. They? They've lowered the bar low. And then low. And then lower. And we go, yeah, they're all the same. And they're like, lower. Yeah, morals in the fucking shit. Lower, but they're all the same anyway. Don't bother voting, it ain't gonna make no difference. Yeah, I'll just moan about the government and that. But I'm gonna vote, yeah? Well, can we have your vote for the vulnerable, please? Thank you.